Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to St. Stephen's. It is so good to have you with us on this day, on this Resurrection Day, um, as we continue in the season of Easter. Just um, one or two things briefly, I would invite you, if you are so inclined and able, join us for the Zoom fellowship afterward. Um, for our folks who have received uh, um, that in our constant contact. So we would look forward to seeing you then. Um, hopefully you have your candle lit as it helps remind us during this time of worship that God's presence is with us. Uh, if you have your bowl of water, um, as we will begin with the Thanksgiving of baptism. Um, and also if you would like to have a piece of paper and pen during prayers that you might write those prayers that are on your hearts and minds as well this day. Uh, so let us now begin our worship. I hope again that you have your bowl of water with you as we give thanks. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. At this time, I would invite you to dip your fingers in the bowl of the water and make the sign of the cross on your foreheads as we remember that we belong to God and we are God's children. God, we give you thanks for creating us in your image and planting us in well-watered garden where we can thrive and grow. When we were parched, you gave us water from the rock. And when we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. And at the cross, you watered us with Jesus' wounded side. And today you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through the waters of our baptism and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us this life only you can give. When we give you honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Son makes himself known to us, to all his disciples, in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith 
that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite the children to come on closer and pay a little bit more special attention here, um, as this is for you. You know, I have to say that um, I realized there's a lot of bad things and not fun things about uh, having the camera here. <laughs> like, I don't know where to even look sometimes. But I also thought I could have a little fun with you. So I'm wondering now, can you see me now? Can you? Yeah? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? How about now? Can you see me now? Woo! Now? Yeah? All right. I'm having a little fun with you, but that is a little good part about the camera here. And in fact, in our gospel today, it's kind of interesting because Jesus shows up unexpectedly to a couple of his disciples. You see, they thought he was dead. They thought he was gone forever. And yet Jesus had been resurrected and he shows up with them on the road. And they don't recognize him at first. They don't really see him until he starts to talk with them, sharing the word. And then he sits with them at the table when they invite him to their home. And when he breaks the bread, they go, oh, we see him, we recognize him. There's Jesus. And then he disappears. You see, Jesus will continue to be with us today. And sometimes we see him and recognize him, and sometimes we don't. But nonetheless, Jesus is always here with us. And that, my dear friends, is what we are going to be talking about more today. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you for always being with us no matter what, no matter whether we see you or not. Open our eyes that we can get a glimpse of you and be a reassured of your presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me and having a little fun with me too. We will now continue with the first reading. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sons may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all pe people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. Know that you were ransomed for the futile, futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuinely mutual love, genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living, enduring, and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Praise be to you. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all of these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a mighty, a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were open. 
And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. New camera views here. <laughs> so, as we now continue to shelter at home, and for those of us who are fortunate to continue to be in good health, two of the most common things that I have been hearing from you and from others on social media and so on have been talking about that you have been doing a lot of walking, and a lot of eating, right? Eating and walking, walking and eating. Now how many of you, I hope I'm looking at you, how many of you are doing a lot of walking these days? You can respond on the chat, the news feed. Um, I, try to, I do try to check that later on. But I, in my mind, I can see a lot of you raising your hands right now, including, yes, my own. You see it. Now, how many of you have been eating, cooking, trying new recipes, eating some more? I can imagine many hands up for that one as well. And yes, including my own. Hey, even you could throw a good recipe on the news feed on our, on our page. But not now, of course, because we're in the middle of worship, right? So in our gospel story today, we hear that in these very mundane things, everyday acts, that's where Jesus shows up and is revealed. We are shifting from the gospel of John's rendition of the resurrection that we've heard the last couple weeks to now the gospel of Luke. And the two the disciples are, are walking along the road back to Emmaus, home, on the evening of the resurrection. It's Easter, but for them, hope is gone. Sadness, despair, deep disappointment is their company. Walking and talking about the tragic events that had occurred only just a few over the past few days. It is in this place that Jesus joins them on the road, walking. Now, we don't know why Cleopas and his companion do not recognize Jesus. Is it grief? Is Jesus' appearance changed? Is he wearing a face mask? We don't know. Luke doesn't tell us. But they are taken aback when Jesus seems ignorant of the events that have taken place. It's much like what we would say today. What? You haven't heard of COVID-19 and all of the devastation all over the world? It's what everybody's talking about. It's on every news feed 24-7. The disciples exclaim, you haven't heard of Jesus of Nazareth's death? We had hoped he would be our Messiah. Past tense. Jesus, as far as they know, is dead. 
The only, uh, the one they staked their lives on, the Messiah they thought that would come and change the world, has died the most humiliating death imaginable. And the promises of a new kingdom have come to nothing. And to top it all off, Jesus' tomb is empty, his body missing. And the women who followed and loved him appear to have gone rather mad with their bizarre reports of angels, visions of angels. Everything has fallen apart. But we had hoped. And now it's over. And how does the resurrected Jesus respond to this? This great irony that Jesus is hearing his own story being told to him. He patiently listens and waits. And Jesus isn't testing, scolding, or humiliating this shell-shocked couple. He is literally joining them on this journey. Much like a teacher who doesn't give away the answer a counselor or good friend who doesn't give pat quick resolutions and solutions. Jesus is there, present, walking alongside them as they narrate their disappointment and confusion. He does not cut them off. He knows that explanations will not cure their foolishness and slowness to believe. As most all of us know, mourning takes time. And when they have finished telling their story of woe, then Jesus puts their story into God's larger story. Opening up scripture and starting with Moses and the prophets, Jesus outlines for them the meaning and significance of his own death, sharing the necessity that he would suffer, die, rise, and be lifted up in his glory. And in hearing God's word proclaimed to them, a flicker of hope is lit. Their hearts begin to burn. And when the two reach their turn to go home, they invite this stranger to come stay with them. So Jesus continues on with them into their home. And as soon as the table is set, Jesus turns the table on them. He shifts from role of guest to host when he takes hold of that bread blesses it, and breaks it. And it is this moment that everything all of a sudden registers. And they finally recognize Jesus. This is such a Jesus thing to do. And when he does it, everything changes. His words and actions at that table that night uh, reverberate. The ones he shares when he feeds the 5,000, when he eats with tax collectors, sinners, the rich and the powerful. Jesus breaks bread with anyone and everything throughout the Gospel of Luke. And it is in his sharing of bread with his friends on that Sunday night it's in the blessing of food and sharing the bread at that ordinary table. The resurrected Jesus enlightens them. In the breaking of the bread, we too can catch a glimpse of Jesus' presence and kingdom. For the Emmaus story speaks to this power the power of the small and commonplace to reveal the divine. God shows up during a quiet evening walk on an old country road. God is made known around our dinner tables and in our homes where I hope you are now. God reveals God's self when we take, bless, break, and give. God is present 
in the rhythms and rituals of our seemingly ordinary days, whether we recognize it or not. You know, one of our younger members of this congregation, Minta, who said I should and could use her name, recently had asked her parents and said to them how sorry that Jesus, she was that Jesus had died before she got a chance to meet him. She had lots of questions and rightfully so. And I promise you I had an opportunity to share with Minta the resurrection hope that she still can meet Jesus, that Jesus is with her. He's alive and present right here and now, all at a safe distance, of course. But like Minta, many of us can easily be in a similar place as those disciples journeying to Emmaus. We can relate to those disciples trying to make sense of life after losing so much, grieving what could have been, wondering where the next chapter of their story, our story, will lead us in the midst of sorrow and loss. Like those disciples, we're currently trying to integrate all of this new information and experience into an old worldview that is clearly broken. And we may feel especially anxious and uncertain about what, this, what our future will bring. So how then do we recognize God with us on this road of confusion, helplessness, and fear? Sometimes faith comes easily, but a lot of times we are slow to recognize God. The experience of those two travelers is fleeting. Just as our glimpses of God, our brushes with God's presence, tend to be. It is often when we look back on our experiences and process them, understanding them better in the rear view mirror, so to speak, more than we do face to face, where we realize God's presence. Soren Kierkegaard, theologian of the 19th century, states, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. And so it must. But we had hoped. So many things are different now than what we had hoped they would be. And yet, the stranger who is the Savior still meets us on the lonely road to Emmaus. The guest who becomes our host still nourishes us with presence, word, and bread. For Jesus promises to always meet us wherever we are. So keep walking. Keep eating. Keep telling the story. Keep honoring the stranger. Keep attending to your burning heart. Christ is risen. He is no less risen on the road to Emmaus than he is anywhere right now. So look for him. Listen for him. For often, it is the journey, even and especially one of sorrow, that leads us to the recognition of new life. That new life walks alongside us patiently, whether we know it or not. Amen.
Separated from our residences, but united by God's promise of restoration, we pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Come to the church so burdened by heartache. Give us faith to know your loving presence among us. Open the scriptures to us and nourish us with the bread of your word. Direct our clergy and church leaders in their novel and difficult tasks. Bind into one all denominations around the globe in hope for the renewal of all things and uphold the work of the World Council of Churches. Come to the earth, bless all the natural world, renew landscapes, cleanse the waters, and protect the animals. Save your people, especially at this time, from destructive storms and floods. Bring viruses into check for the sake of your beloved humans. Come to the nations. Preserve all peoples from war and violence. Guide the leaders of nations, our president, our governors, and our legislators towards wise decisions in struggling against the virus and in reviving the economy. Teach all peoples how to share limited resources with those in greater need. Guide the work of the United Nations during this unprecedented situation. Come to all who suffer from the virus. Comfort the mourners, heal the sick, sustain medical workers, empower those researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Stay with us and accompany all who are isolated or afraid. Give to those with prior ailments and chronic disease their necessary medical care. Especially we pray for those we name here before you, Sally, John, Jane, Alan, Christy, Ernie, and for Patty and her mother, Jackie. For Lindsay, Karen, Dale, and Vicki. For Katrina and son-in-law, JP. For Mary and her mother, Arlene. For Myra and Dan. For the families and friends of Jean Copenhaver and Marlene Katz, grieving their deaths. For Ron and Dee, for Barb and Kathy. As at Emmaus, you joined the meal of the disciples, so come also to our tables. Uphold farmers, ranchers, migrant workers, and all who produce, package, and market our food. Guard the health of those who work at grocery stores. Bless the efforts of local food banks. Enable us to feed the children who have relied on food given out at school. Show us how to feed the people living in refugee camps and nations experiencing famine and drought. Walk with us on our roadways, whether marked with sorrow or joy, and receive the laments or praises of our own hearts, offered silently, out loud, in writing, or in the comments of this live feed. Accept our praises for those who have died in faith, including those who, who are stricken with the virus, the medical workers who died healing others, and for Jean, Marlene, and Jenny. Accompany us now as you did them, until at the end of all things we feast at your table with all the saints in glory. With bold confidence in your providence, O holy and gracious God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our saving Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I would invite you to share the peace 
If you have uh, folks in your home, you can share around the table. Again, share a word of peace, uh, emoji, anything with us on the feed here. We do love that feedback. We love to see you um, with us and a part of us um, and know that we are truly extending our peace out to you. And as you continue with sharing the peace, I would again like to say thank you uh, for all of the continued offerings. It truly uh, helps and makes this whole ministry and mission possible. So thank you so much um, for your work and for your diligence and for your giving uh, and your generosity. Uh, just a note that you can find the donation button on our Facebook page. Uh, there is a donation button on our website page um, or a continue to send in your offering envelopes as well. It is truly appreciated. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Rebecca doesn't know this, but I'm joining her on this because this is our blessing to you right now. Please hear it. We're farther apart than we look. We are. <laughs>
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you for being with us today. May God be with you.